Job chapter 7. Let me get there. Read one verse. Then we'll go back and read several more. <clears throat> verse 7. Job said, as he was talking to his three good friends, says, Oh, remember that my life is wind. Oh, remember that my life is wind. Let's pray. My dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day once again. We thank you, the Lord, for your mercy and your grace. We thank you, the Lord, for saving us. We thank you for Calvary. We thank you for all that it represents and all that you've done for us. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us as Christians, as believers, victory over death. We thank the Lord that you've given us victory over sin and hell. That we don't have to worry about the pains of hell and the fires of hell for all eternity. We thank God that we're going to be in heaven for all eternity with our Savior and our loved ones. Those that have gone on before, those that have been born again, washed in the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we're looking forward to that day. Lord, when you call us home or you come back and take your bride away. Looking forward to it. Can't wait. And I pray to God that you'd help us until then to be faithful to giving out the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because as Job said, my life is win. I pray that you'd help me this morning as I preach, that you, something that you laid on my heart concerning what all we uh, have experienced this week. I pray that you'd be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Job said in Job 7, verse 7, Oh, remember that my life is wind. If I had to title this message, it would be, My Life is Wind. Let's go back to verse 1. Then we'll stop there in verse 7. We'll look at a couple other passages. Verse 1, it says, Job, again, was talking to his friends here, or what they call themselves as friends. Job said, Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? He asked the question, Is there an appointed time for man? Certainly, certainly there is. There is an appointment every man, every woman, every boy and girl and child, regardless of your race, regardless of your uh, gender, regardless of anything, there is an appointed time unto man once to die, the Bible tells us. And that's what Job is asked here. Is there? An appointed time to man upon earth? Certainly there is. He goes on to say, Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? What's a hireling? That's a person who is hired out for wages. A person who is promised to, to, to work, and he has said, Well, I'll work for this amount of money, and I'll show up, and I'll do my job. Is there not his days also like the days of a hireling? Certainly. As a servant, Earnestly desireth the shadow. What is that? A servant desire, desireth the shadow. That means he desires for the sun to go down so he can get a little break and get a little rest. And so that he can take a little rest, um, a little sila, so to speak, from, from his labors. And it says, and as an hireling, again, that's hired labor, look it for the reward of his work. He's looking for a paycheck. Brother Bill, I paid Brother Bill this morning. You know what? Brother Bill probably been upset this morning if I said, you know, Brother Bill, I think I'm not going to pay you this time. I, I think I'm just going to let you do that for free. He probably get upset, and rightfully so. And rightfully so. Every person who is hired out is looking for a reward for his work. Verse 3. So am I made to possess months of vanity and wearisome nights are appointed to me. When I lie down, I say, when shall I arise? And the night be gone. And I am full of tossing to and fro until the dawning of the day. You know what? You ever have a sleepless night where you can't sleep? Something's on your mind. You got a headache. You don't feel good. Tossing to and fro. Well, certainly Job had that problem. Over in chapter 2, around verse 7, verse 8. Uh, it, it, Satan had um, given, um, got permission from God to give Job a bunch of oils on his body and sickness. It must have been some type of cancer or something of that sense because he was sitting down scraping himself, scraping those boils 
with a pot shear or a piece of pottery that was sharp and scraping those things. Verse 5, he goes on to say, My flesh is clothed with worms and clods of dust. That means clumps of dirt. My skin is broken and become loathsome. That means it's become repulsing or disgusting. Well, that's what he says about his own body. He must have had some type of disease. He was eaten up with the boils that Satan had struck him with. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle and are spent without hope. A weaver's shuttle. I worked in a cloth mill. Anybody else work in a cloth mill? We've got just farmers here. Uh, I worked in a cloth mill. My dad... He worked in a cloth mill many years of his life, and I would always hear him tell about a weaver's beam, or, or he had a shuttle, there was a shuttle, and sitting in warps, and I never knew what all that talked about. Until I went to work at a cloth mill. And I began to learn how to weave and do other things on the side, because I was a I sat in warps, and the weave was not my job, it's just something I did to help the company and help the, I just learned how to do it to help production and help. And that's what a good boss ought to do. You ought to help someone else. And what my job to start up someone's loom? I was sitting in them warps. Everybody looked at me like, what are you doing? That's not your job. I said, it didn't make no difference. I work for the company. I'm on company time. My job's done. Let's do something else. Nobody want to do that. But anyway, so I learned how to weave and learn how to start up those machines. And I'd watch them and I'd learn. I was learning how to become a mechanic at the same time. And so... That we verse being that here is mentioned by Job, he said, My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. And you don't know what that is. It looks kind of like a ship, to be honest with you. Got points on the end. And what that weaver's shuttle does is when they sit in that yarn or sit in the, the what they call a warp, it's full of wool strings. And it looks like a, a you ever everybody seen a little spindle of blue a string or whatever? Except this is like tens of thousands of them. And it's going up to these um, uh, to, the, to the to the machine, and and what happens is that weaver, weaver shuttle has got to take that thread and thread it through those those um, warps and so forth. Um, and it does it at lightning speed. And I've heard of my daddy telling of a story where uh, that shuttle come out of there, hit a man in the head one time, and killed him. That thing was so fast, it's got a steel point on the end, just killed him instantly, hit him right in the head. And uh, that thing is flying. I don't know how fast it flies, but it has to get from one point to another point and back and take that, um, that, um, that um, yarn or string uh, across there, which I guess they call it string. I forget what they call it right now. Thread. That's what it is. Thread. Here's another word for it. <laughs> uh, take that thread across there and weave it in between those warps so that it would make a pattern on the cloth that was coming out. And so that thing is shooting by there at great rates of speed. And that's what he's saying here. My days are swifter than that weaver shuttle that's going back and forth. That thing is awful loud and it's flying out. You can see that thing going so fast it's hard to describe without you seeing it. And Job said, my days are swifter than that shuttle. That's how fast life is and are spent without hope. Oh, remember, he says in verse 7, that my life is wind. That my life is wind. We're going to come back to that, so hold your space there. And turn to James. James chapter 4. James chapter 4, verse 13. James talks about the same thing as uh, other writers of the Bible does. We're going to look at just one more after this. James said, Go to down, ye that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? What is it? Well, he don't answer it. He asks the question, then he answers it. It is even a vapor. Now, what's a vapor? How many of you ever seen anything on the stove? And it's boiling, and the steam comes up. We boil tea all the time for me. You know what? That steam from the point 
of, of the liquid to the point of about this high. Just seven or eight, nine, ten inches. That's a vapor. It goes up before you know it, it's gone. That's what your life is, James said. He described it as a vapor. Job described it as a wind. He said, it is even a vapor that appeared for a little time. And that's what a vapor does. It appears just for a brief second or two and then vanish away. That's what a vapor is. I've seen my mom cooking things, boiling water, um, boiling potatoes, or whatever. Nowadays, you know, you got these fans that take all the steam out. But before those days, I remember the steam sometimes get kind of high. Regardless, it didn't take long for the steam to vanish away. <coughs> and James says, this is your life. This is my life. Well, what you ought to say, instead of saying, I'm going to go to now and do what I want to do, and tomorrow we will go to the city and, and buy and, and sell and trade and do all. What you should be saying is this. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live. Why should we say that? Because our life is just a vapor. Before we know it, it's here and then it's gone. For this you ought to say, if the Lord will, we will live and do this or that. But now you rejoice in your boasting. All such rejoicing is evil. You know, I was talking to Mr. Jack yesterday. I don't know if you heard me. He paid me any attention. You don't probably pay me no attention. I understand that. Uh, I'm much younger than he is. Yesterday I was talking to him on the hills. He, he took a break a second from weeding. And I said, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. That's just something normally I try to do. Because that's what the Bible teaches. Lord willing, I may not see you tomorrow. He could have had a heart attack tonight. I could have had a heart attack tonight. I could have had a heart attack last night. The fact is, <coughs> life is a vapor. Talked with my neighbor yesterday. They're going to be going all week. Not one time they say, Lord willing, we're going to leave in the morning. Lord willing, that's because the Lord wasn't on the mind to begin with. But not one time. Lord willing, we're going to go and do all this stuff. Boy, we're going to have a lot of fun. And we're going to go up there and have a good party with about 35 other people. Lord, not one time, Lord willing. First off, Lord not willing to do that. Not on Sunday. Nobody hardly ever says that anymore. You're a patient. What you going to do? Well, I'm going to go and do this, and I'm going to go do that. And What about Lord willing? What the Bible says. Because our life is so short, because it's like a vapor, what we ought to be saying is, Lord, Lord with him, we shall do this and that. Turn over to Psalms 78. Psalms 38, no, I'm sorry, Psalm 78, verse 39. This is the Lord talking about the children of Israel. It says, For he remembered, look at verse 38 first, but he, talking about God, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away. Yes, he did. And he has done that for us. And did not stir up all his wrath. Boy, you hate to see the wrath of God stirred up. Why? Because or far. That word far means because. For he remembered that they were but flesh. Maybe this is the... The justice, the unjust God, Mr. Jack was talking about earlier. 